two topics we're going to talk about a lot this semester are precision and accuracy. First, let's discuss the difference between the two. So for precision, it's going to tell us something about reproducibility or uncertainty in a measurement that we take. Okay. To figure out precision, we can look at something called significant figures, which we'll discuss in a moment. The other one is accuracy. So if we do a calculation based on measurements that we took in the lab and compare that to a known value, how accurate is our experimental value that we determined? So that's accuracy. You may not realize it, but we actually use precision a lot in our daily lives. We just don't give it that name. Anytime we follow a recipe to cook something, or let's say we were measuring something in our house, maybe a window, or on a bigger scale, if we're constructing large buildings, all of these have to do with precision because the reproducibility depends on the tool we use to make the measurement. Okay, when you're cooking, you usually use um, measuring cups or measuring spoons. When you're measuring a window, for example, you use measuring tape. When you're making a building, every single tool that you use has to be very precise. In a lab situation, we're going to be working with different glassware, so beakers and graduated cylinders and different types of flasks. And when we're using those to measure something, we have some choices. Here's one example. We could use a beaker. Let's say we're measuring some liquid. We could use a beaker or we could use what's called a graduated cylinder. I want you to look closely at the increments of measurement. Which one would you choose to be the most precise or be the most reproducible? Meaning that if you took that measurement and then your lab partner took the measurement, they should be very close. Okay. So the reproducibility has to do with the size of the increments. When you look at a beaker, the increments are much larger, leaving more room for um, error or them to not be as reproducible. When we use a graduated cylinder, the increments of measurement are very small, so this is going to give us the better precision, very similar to us using measuring spoons or measuring cups when we're cooking. In general, one thing that we should remember is the more significant figures we have in a numerical value, that means it's more reproducible and the more precision we have. Right? So how do we determine the number of significant figures if that number tells us how precise our measurement is? We have a list of rules that we can follow to determine that. The first rule is all non-zero digits are always significant. So if we have the number 782, that is going to have three significant figures. The next rule is that interior zeros or zeros that are between two non-zero numbers are significant. So if we have 608, that zero in the middle is significant, we have a total of three significant figures. Next rule is trailing zeros or zeros after a decimal point are going to be significant. So if we have the example of 2.00, those two zeros at the end actually count. So we will have a total of three significant figures. So if we have a measurement of 2.00, that is very different from a measurement of 2. The one that's 2.00 is going to be more precise. The next rule is that leading zeros or zeros to the left of the first non-zero number are not significant. They're only used to locate a decimal point. So if we have 0 0.78, the zero in front is not significant. We have two significant figures. If we have 0 0.004073, we get four significant figures. The last rule is that zeros at the end of a number that contain no decimal point are ambiguous. If we have the number 500, we know for sure that the five is significant, that gives us one, but we don't know whether or not the two zeros are significant. So that gives us one significant figure, or we can just say that it's ambiguous. Created using Powtoon.